Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Alter Ego, Collector Item Classics, three great issues. This was all combined into one. This is the most current book anyway. This is a softback and this comes at $35.95. I paid £26. There's 256 pages in it. And the book includes, I think it's Alter Ego 160, 161 and 170. Don't hold me on that. But it was for Steve Ditko, of course, you see there. The Jack Kirby, and of course, then another one just of Stanley and Jack Kirby. Let's just go through the book. Now, I've got quite a few of the alter egos over the years. I haven't got many now, actually. Got this one. I love this one. Golden Age. This is a Marvel Comics index, or timely index, I should say. Also, this one is for 80s comics, and this is excellent as well. Probably next one I'm going to get is the novelty comic one that's coming out, I think, in December. So I'm looking forward to that one. But this... Nice quality book. You can see the range of stuff in here. You can see the table of contents there. Whole range of Steve Ditko and of course Stan Lee there. And there's the Kirby Index. And then you've got a lovely article about Steve Ditko. We hardly knew you. And I think that's right actually. Steve Ditko, A Life in Comics. And of course, you can't miss first appearance of Spider-Man. Nor can you ever forget Eric Stanton. This one, Space Dolls. I wonder why they've never brought that out in hardback. And also it's got, of course... The unused, the unused one of the amazing fantasy. I actually think that's better. But still, I guess the reason they flipped the character. So they put the character, the obviously the villain, on the other side, though he doesn't look that much like the original character. But still, I guess that's the reason they changed it. I don't know. But I think the second one is a lot better in many ways. As well as Doctor Strange, Nightmare, Conga. Gorgo. Also, a pretty decent Steve Ditko checklist. Lots and lots of details about all the various books, magazines, comics, etc. And, wow, a lot of material. He worked for a lot of publishers. You can see there, Harris Publications, Harvey Comics, LW Publications, Major Magazines, obviously Marvel Comics, Tower Comics, Tops Comics, Stanmore, St. John's. I love St. John's. Always good stuff. I love they also include these. These are the ones that are the UK ones. The Mighty World of Marvel. And yet more reminiscences about Ditko. Some of his later artwork was very odd, but I really liked it. I must admit, Mr. Ray and all those ones, very, very odd, but enjoyable. Also, a layout of Steve Ditko's studio, as well as an interview with Mark Ditko. I mean, that's a pretty amazing <laughs> artwork. Absolutely stunning. And you can't, of course, forget Squirrel Girl. You have to get a copy of this. I used to have it. Unfortunately, I got rid of mine. Son of Origins of Marvel Comics. I love these ones. Marvel Comics Index. I got virtually, I think, all of them. Conan one, the Thor one. I think, well, Journey into Mystery, it would have been called. Avengers, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man, etc. Even a bit of Red Sonja. They've just released the Marvel Age Omnibus. I haven't bought it. I'm thinking about it. One of those magazines that I bought occasionally, but not particularly enough that I think, oh, you know what? I must get the Omnibus. And Sissindig. Oh, no, no, Six Neck. Genesis, of course, in reverse. So, the Book of Revelations. Yeah, another one of from the UK, which is really good. Mystic. Really love those issues. Seen quite a few over the years. One shilling. There's also a great article about the UK comics. I love that. Mighty World of Marvel. Apparently, there's a book called From Sense to Pence. I'm really looking forward to when that comes out. I don't know when it will, but hopefully, soon enough, I will definitely be picking up a copy. Even Mark Boland gets into the book. Now that's something, isn't it? One dollar for an autograph. <laughs> well, I assume that was an original autograph. One dollar. Anyway, from Stan the Man Lee. <laughs> the fact they put it guaranteed to be the most useless item you'll ever own. Mm. Again, lots more reminiscences about the early comics. Bud Plant, that's a really great one. Also, Sean Clancy. And a lot of great examples there. Brilliant bit of pulp there. The Spider, of course. And Tales of Suspense, the thing called Metallo. Metal. There were some odd issues there. Iron Man versus Carla, Queen of the Netherworld. These are always great. Next issue, Avengers feature Submariner. Avengers Submariner. I wish they would do that more often, but these lovely ones where it sort of gave a real sort of, wow, can't wait for that for next issue. That's a pretty famous poster as well. Kirby, perhaps the start of the Marvel Age. This was the first issue that had Kirby and Lee together, but where the Rawhide Kid. And I think in the Marvel's first, it's actually the first story. Always an odd start. The Fantastic Four. A lot of Stan Lee slash Kirby stories. Lots of punch-ups. <laughs> These were, of course, the top 10 slugfests. I'm surprised that makes number two. Journey into Mystery 112. Well, or Avengers number three. I always thought that was probably one of the classics of the slugfest. The next one, the winner... 
Yeah, more UK, Max. Actually, I wonder why no one's brought out a tomorrow's UK one, because it would be brilliant to see all the selection of these sort of issues in here. Also, Titans Annual 1978, and I love these ones. These ones are Fantastic Four Annual. I think that was quite an odd annual, that one. Was, they did a few of these storybook ones. Very strange. As well as these pocketbooks. I love those pocketbooks. I'd love to visit that. The Jack Kirby Museum. I mean, that must be the most amazing place to go to. And also you've got some black magic and your dreams. And as ever with tomorrow's, they always put, of course, the end page with all the latest books I've got. Actually, the John Severin one. I've noticed there's a John Severin Westerns one that come, that's coming out that looks really amazing. It's uh, from Fantasy Graphics. It's, it's not cheap, but at the same time, it does look pretty impressive. Also, you've got Reed Crandall, as well as Charlton Comics. I love Charlton Comics. I love the back page as well. I mean, look at that brilliant bit of Ditko. I mean, that's just superb, as well as that wonderful bit of Kirby, Doctor Doom thing and Red Skull. Classic. Well, I absolutely love this. Now, I don't know why I didn't actually buy the originals when they came out, 160, 161 and 170. But at the same time, I'm just glad they brought them out in this lovely collection. This is a really decent alter ego book. And I just think it's just full of great stories, lots and lots of great picks all the way through and a real wonderful edition. Again, I don't know why sometimes they put them in hardback, sometimes in softback. Very strange. But this one is in softback. Still a really enjoyable, enjoyable read.